you know, being a Nick has not always been um, over the last 20 years, something to uh, proudly say and proclaim from the rooftops. We got a kid in RJ Barrett last year who seems, seemed to be happy with the fact still seems pretty happy with it. Um, we got another one here who, who he seems like he's excited about this. Dayton is not New York. Um, you know, Ohio is, is, is not New York. Dayton's not New York. Do you think he will just being around him take to the return home after two years in, in that setting? I think yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I put this out uh, uh, draft night, even um, on Twitter. I said, I, and I firmly believe this. Obi can be to the Knicks what Derek Jeter was to the Yankees. Wow. That I think he can be not just an all-star player, but that face, that, you know, that, that leader in the community of your program, you know, and, and, and I think he's really got, he's even more outgoing than Jeter was kind of pretty of a quiet guy, kind of, you know, he was not out there. He had a way about him. That was right. Yeah. But he was the guy, he was the guy and he was the, there was no doubt. He was facing, and I think Obi's got that. He's got that. He's got what the, gives you that impression? Is there anything one thing that stands out that gives you that impression? Or, well, I you know I'll I'll quote what you know I saw it, but a lot of times I, I look at what other people observe as kind of verify, ver- verifying and validating what I observe. Okay. And uh, Coach Donaher, who's in the College Basketball Hall of Fame, and Coach Anthony Grant, and 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 uh, he said the thing that amazed him about Obi, he goes. You never see a team where the guy is also the best teammate. Wow. And he was the best player. He was the best teammate. He was um, the most engaging with, with the fans. And one of the things that was amazing about Obi was that, you know how a lot of great players have tunnel vision? Sure. You know, they block everything out. And they're just laser focused on the task at hand, you know, the Kobe you know, Mamba mentality, that type of thing, which is one way to go. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it, and it's very effective for those type of individuals, you know, the tiger woods, you know, yeah. you know, that Obi is the type of guy that, you know, he would banter with the fans during the course <laughs> of the game. Opposing fans would be, <laughs> you know, you know, you, you could say he had rabbit ears, you know, cause he would hear what people say, but, yeah, I mean, we, they played a game played a game at Richmond this year, and 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 this was a first hostile game they had to play. Okay, okay, they played. You know, there's there's a lot of places the A10 where Dayton would have more fans than the home team. That was the case St. Joe's, LaSalle. It's always the case at Fordham. Um, you know, and, and so play at Richmond, and they actually had opposing fans, hostile fans, and their baseball team sitting behind the basket, and they've. Get painted up, and they, they were there before the Dayton team arrived. Oh, they were ready to go. Okay, they were ready to go. They were ready to go. You know, and they probably had tuned up a little bit too. I was about- <laughs> listen. Yeah, and so, and so you know, and Dayton's not like doing the official way up line stuff. They're just out, just shooting around the court, mm-hmm. and they're 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 all over Obi. They're all over Obi, and they're saying overrated. And all these just you know, just talking trash to him. And National it, player of the year, but okay, fine. Yeah, and, and he's just and, – and he's giving it right back to them. And in the second half, um, they were underneath Dayton's basket in the second half, and he came down, and I think he knew they were there. Okay. Because he came down, and he threw down a windmill dunk. Oh, I know the one you're – yeah, I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, that where one of his teammates actually was pantomiming behind him, and he just <laughs> – Threw that down and literally right in their face and, you know, and just said, okay, what do you think about me now? <laughs> the postscript to this, he signed autographs for the guys after the game. Oh, wow. That's see, that's cool to hear. And it's been a while, I think since I'm not going to say we haven't had some personalities here again over the last couple of decades, but I don't know that the fans really ever, other than Lynn Sanity, which was kind of a weird thing. Um, I don't know if the fans ever really took to it as far as like, okay, this is our guy. You know, he's ours. We, we, you know, he, he's a good person. He's a really good person. This is a high character kid. And his mind, I, when he was uh, his freshman year, we were playing a game at the uh, Mohegan Sun Casino in, up in Connecticut. 
and we're waiting in the lobby area to walk over to the to the gym. Some woman comes up and she's asking, you know, someone told me you're a real life basketball player. Well, <laughs> how tall are you? And, you know, and just don't I mean, totally dumb questions, total pain. And he was patient with her. And yes, ma'am, I am. And I'm playing for the University of Dayton. And we're here today to play Tulsa. And, um, you know, and uh, yeah, we're going to and, and it just was so patient with her. And she leaves and comes back. She goes, oh, can I get a picture? Yeah, sure. I'll be glad to. <laughs> So I tell his mom this and his mom goes, oh, not surprising. She goes, I called him the mayor when he was a little kid. Oh, that's great. I'd push him around in the stroller there in the streets of Brooklyn. I'd push him around in the stroller and he's in his stroller going, hey there. Hi, everyone. How you doing? Hey, good morning. Hey, everybody. Hi. And he unchanged. 